wins to open the season against the LA teams and a budding young Sacramento Kings team give the Warriors a 3-0 record in the early going. It's not like they've been blowing out teams and winning by a ton of points, but the chemistry they've displayed right off the bat has been noteworthy. Draymond scoring more, which Steve Kerr said was crucial to the team's offense, Green's spacing, screen setting, and defense is also extremely valuable for the dubs. Along with the former DPOY's impact, Jordan Poole's already put up two 20-point games. Damian Lee's been in double figures in all three games, while the distance shooting provided by Nemanja Bialica and the screen setting provided by Kevon Looney rank those two big men second and third on the team behind Steph Curry in player efficiency rating. This video shows you every reason for why the Warriors are dominating early on. Before continuing, only 27.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're not in that percentage, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. I know I just broke down some Steph gameplay two days ago and made a Warrior video last week, but this Warrior team has lived up to the hype so far, so I thought I'd talk about the cohesion in their offensive flow and break down what's making them so damn tough to beat early on. Don't forget, this team took down the Lakers and Clippers who were two West playoff teams from last year and then flew into Sacktown to take down a very talented young Kings team who I think has a great chance at breaking out and ending their playoff drought. Davion Mitchell aka off night because whoever he's guarding has an off night played exceptional against Golden State. The rookie dropped 22 points, 17 of them in the first half, and was playing his tough patented perimeter defense on the Warrior guards. Harrison Barnes had 24 points while Swipe of the Fox added 17 points, 6 assists on 50% shooting from the field. This game in the River City for Golden State was anything but easy especially considering that Steph Curry had an off night shooting. But Steph does all the little things. He dropped 10 dimes, snatched three steals with his underrated defense, and the story of this year has been how shockingly well Steph's rebounding the basketball. He's averaging nine rebounds, but entering the game against Sacramento, Steph was tied for the league lead in board getting among point guards. For the dubs as a team, with Andre Iguodala out with left hip soreness, Coach Kerr had to shake up his rotation a bit. Off-season acquisitions, Nemanja Bialica and Otto Porter Jr. have been playing well so far, but they failed to generate much offensive punch in Sacktown. That led Steve Kerr to turn to the 15th player on the roster, Gary Payton II. In 17 minutes, Gary posted 11 points and 4 rebounds, hitting two crucial threes to help seal the game down the stretch. After the game, Curry was asked if Gary Payton II's terrific performance in the victory exhibited the value of having the team fill its 15th and final roster spot. Curry responded by saying 1000%. Defensively, he gives us an edge and then he knocked down two threes, which was huge. If he's going to get open shots, he has to take them. We just want him to stay locked in, stay competitive, and stay focused on when his moment comes and show he can do it. The 28-year-old GP2 stands at only six foot three, but Gary's wingspan stretches out to six foot eight, which allows him to display the pesky defense that Curry touched on. Steve Kerr reportedly told Peyton before the game in Sacramento, who played a total of 10 seconds in the first two games, that he could get significant playing time, of course, with Iggy out. With Andre out with hip soreness, Gary may have earned himself some more minutes in the rotation. But getting irregular minutes can be mentally draining for a player, but Peyton, who spent six years scratching and clawing to earn a regular roster spot in the NBA, he prides himself on dedication. Quote, I've been doing it for a while now, and it's really my job to stay ready at all times. Just make sure I'm ready to do whatever I've got to do, to be ready as soon as I hear it's go time. I've been doing it for a while now, so it's pretty much my job. Having a 15th man like Gary just goes to show you how deep the Warriors talent goes this year. Key cogs in the depth chart like Damian Lee, Juan Toscano-Anderson, and Andrew Wiggins 
have all been excellent in their respective roles up to this point. Stepping up as one of the team's star players, Jordan Poole's poise operating as a pick and roll ball handler and pull up three point shooter has taken the next step. Jordan's turning it over four times per game, but the third year player out of Michigan's doing a stellar job handling the newly tasked responsibility of being Steph Curry's right hand man. Poole's giving coach Steve Kerr 17 points as the team's starting two guard, and his development is crucial for the dubs. Most intriguing out of anything that's been mentioned today, the Warriors have the old productive offensive Draymond back. Last year in the play-in, Green embarrassingly missed a floater that could have gotten the Warriors the eighth seed in the West. He shot just 27% from three for this season and averaged just seven points per game. Back in 2015-16, this was a guy who made 39% of his deep range attempts and poured in 14 points per night over 81 games. Green scored the fewest points of his career last season, his third straight year with a scoring average in the single digits. However, his star has hardly faded. He renewed his spot among the NBA's first team all defense honors and dished out the most assists of his career at 8.9 per game. Kerr took Green aside before the Warriors' preseason opener in Portland and said to him, I want you shooting two or three threes every game. If you're open, let it fly. While Green only knocked down his first three last night, he's one for two on deep range shots in the regular season so far. More importantly, he's averaging 10 points on 55% shooting from the field. In the preseason over four games, Dre shot a solid 38% from three on two attempts per game. If Green can even somewhat resemble the efficient player who could drop 15 to 20 on any given night during the mid-2010s, that adds another element. We know how Dre's chemistry with Steph running pin downs, split actions, and cross screens makes the Warriors dangerous, but Green's scoring is such an X factor. If he's spacing the floor and hitting timely daggers with consistency, that just kills opposing defenses who of course like to trap Steph in the paint and on the wing. It's extremely wise that the former coach of the year and Steve Kerr is challenging Draymond and trying to get the most out of his bucket getting. It would have been easy for Kerr to just accept the value that Green already provides, but encouraging his three-point shooting was really smart. Draymond always responds to a challenge and like I said, it's an impossibility to guard this Warriors team if Green's hitting his deep range bombs. So could this flying start for the Dubs, who are trying desperately to resume their dynasty, last into the near future? Let's look at the next 5 to 10 opponents for this squad. I'll likely check in on the Dubs and make another video on them after this set of games. Following the trip to Sacktown on Tuesday, the Warriors will keep their show on the road, traveling to OKC to take on the 0-3 Thunder. Rookie Josh Giddy and youngins in Shea Gilgis and Lou Dort give this Thunder team some solid young talent. They'll be hungry for their first W in a building that Steph Curry has hit one of the most iconic shots in league history. This should be a W for the Warriors, which would make them 4-0. After the short trip from Cali to Oklahoma, the Warriors open a lengthy eight-game homestand that'll keep the Warriors at Chase Center all the way through until November 12th. We know how Curry thrives off the crowd in the Bay Area, so it's always a good thing for the team to be playing in San Fran and sleeping in their own beds. In that homestand, the Dubs will match up against the Grizzlies, Thunder again, the Hornets, Pelicans, Rockets, Hawks, Timberwolves, and Bulls. With the improvement of the Timberwolves and Hornets, the danger of John ja Morant, the Hawks who just got to the East Finals, and the new look Bulls looking scary, those games won't be a walk in the park. But I could see the Dubs starting like 7-0 or 8-0. Let me know all your thoughts on this team in the comments. This was D-Flow. You're the best for sticking around, and I'll see you next video.